in all honesty, this episode is a lot more of setting up the stage in the hero side of things, for the most part, considering that we have All Might and the police chief working with other trusted people in a small group on what is the main plan. We have Izuku Midoriya and Ida going and getting new parts for their stuff, since their gear is kind of worn out. And then you have Aizawa speaking with Aoyama and trying to get him prepared for what is essentially the big plan to finally put down All For One. Since this whole thing has been, All For One is the threat. And I like in the meeting that they acknowledge that, yes, uh, normally All For One would go with Shigaraki and the two would have probably gone to fight Star and Stripes, but due to her quirk, it would have been a bad idea because had she said All For One, it's more likely than not that we would have had the series wrap up right then and there, which I like that they bring back Star and Stripes, despite the fact that, yes, I've seen a lot of the community angry again that she's just set to the side was killed off in such a way but i think that is a discussion for its own video if anything but my opinion on it is uh, it's just interesting just how annoyingly dangerous shigaraki slash all for one is uh anyway let's start off at the beginning where they're speaking about aoyama and how he can be useful with present mike basically reminding them that hey he still committed a crime he still helped the villains which obviously they kind of are all discussing about how they're willing to forgive aoyama and that he can still be useful for them him and his parents to at least trick all for one and start somewhere rather than nothing to which i have to say i think as much as I dislike Bakugo, despite seeing the great character growth he sort of had before that last season, last season's last episode completely made me think, yeah, it almost feels like all oh, of this was pointless if they're just going to do a stupid fucking bath scene. Okay, I shouldn't rant about that, but I think I just didn't like the way that happened. But Bakugo makes a point, like... Out of all of the people who probably should be mad at Aoyama and may have a tough time forgiving him, it'd be him. Considering that all the events that happened of him being captured, forcing All Might to fight All For One, and then feeling responsible that it's his fault that All Might retired. I would feel that there'd be some resentment to Aoyama now that he knows that it's all his fault that all that happened. So... I'll give him that. I, I might even agree. Anyone would feel like that. And yeah, they, it feels a bit too... Everyone's giving Aoyama less crap. But I also think... I mean, the dude is being threatened but with his family. Any one of us would also do that. So we go back into that little philosophical battle between whether he should even be forgiven or not. But that aside, we do have... Aizawa come in from the monitor because he's still injured from the war from the previous war and basically first he tells them do we all even have a plan to which no they don't they're just speaking out of their asses trying to think of something that Aoyama could help them with so he basically comes up with a plan one that obviously will work because we all trust Aizawa we all trust that he knows what he's doing so we move on from there to Deku and Ida getting their upgrades, which I just gotta love this little callback. This funniest scene, considering two things. One, his face, just how serious he still looks. And even when he's like embarrassed, he still is looking oddly serious. To which he mentions something about how Danger Sense thing caught that, which should be a red flag that this could be a problem especially against a certain someone who doesn't necessarily fight to kill in the normal sense. But I, I'll, I'll let y'all guess. But second, I just kind of like that even Aida kind of like deja vu. And kind of just thinking back to literally season three. But aside from that, I think it's cool showing us like other students that aren't like fight capable. Their fight capabilities aren't that high and yet they prove themselves through different memes means 
So the support group, they basically are making all the gadgets to which I got to say. Tsume is one impressive gal. Either she had this ready or she can just make crap with just one hand. And I don't know, that, that's impressive that even though they're not at high tier gears like they would want, it is still pretty cool that she's able to create them something with the other classmates wanting to have given it a try, but obviously having lost their chance, unfortunately, which I feel bad for them. And then after this, we have the meeting again, though I like that they, aside from All For One and Shigaraki being like the big two threats, they also mentioned Dobby being one hell of a threat, and I think it's warranted. Like. I will not defend the asshole for being a, a villain. I get why he became a villain, but I mean, everyone had their choices. But one thing I will say is he knows how to turn up the flames and become a literal anarchist of destruction. So I think it's warranted making him be one of the top three dangerous villains in that entire group. But moving on, I did like seeing at least two of the big three just kind of helping people out scatnizing what other people are doing as well as other heroes what they're up to while they have this one week of training that they need before the big final fight comes into play and then at the end of the episode one of the most greatest one-to-one -on -one character moments with Aizawa talking with Aoyama, helping him out as a teacher would with a student, and essentially, like, confirming that, yes, he still believes in him. Like, yeah, he did all this and that, but he feels partially responsible for it because it's, he's the teacher. He should have caught on to this. And, yeah, he's gonna do everything he can to make sure that Aoyama can not only do his part, but overcome this self-guilt he has gotten since, uh, obviously, he caused so much trouble for his classmates. And yeah, he even mentions, I mean, it's rare to have friends that are willing to look over that little betrayal and just still want to believe in you. I think that is rare as well. Even with the given context, most would have trouble believing, but this is like one of the rare times that they're willing to give him a chance because Aside from him being one of the key factors into beating All For One, they've been together for, I mean, it feels so long because it's six seasons, but considering it's a year, I mean, I, I guess a full year with someone, like, you don't really realize it until you start putting it into perspective that, man, we've, we've done a lot. So all this talk is able to eventually get Aoyama to be ready for what's to come. And then we got a little post credit scene that caught me off guard with a familiar face who almost has the same look as Aizawa, just a young version of him in a sense. In a sense. But anyway, I think this is an okay episode. It, it definitely is more of a the hero side of setting up for what's to come because they need to be ready. They need to know what their part is because what's about to happen for this final war is probably going to change everything of the story.